everyone. Welcome to Preschool Storytime. I'm Miss Carolyn and I am so excited that you're joining me for Storytime today. This is our virtual story time, our first one for March, and we are going to start with our opening song. Now, if this is the first month that you're joining us for our opening song, let me teach you all of the different moves that we have for the opening song. If you joined us for February story times, then you are going to probably be an expert at these opening song moves, but we'll practice anyway, because practicing never hurts. All right, so our opening song is clap everybody and say hello. So there are three different moves that we need. The first one is we have to clap. So we'll wake up our clapping hands this morning. And then we say hello in sign language. And how you say hello in sign language is you hold up four fingers and then you put them together and then you salute just like this. So you put your fingers to your forehead and you salute. And that's how you say hello in sign language. And then the last move that we need is you hold up your hands like this. This is called an I don't know gesture. And we're actually going to use it a little bit later on too in a different song. But this is what we're going to use for no matter what the weather. We'll go like this. All right, are we ready for our opening song? Okay, let's get started. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello, no matter what the weather. Very good, everyone. Now you know the tune, but this time we're gonna change up the motions a little bit. So we are going to pretend like we're throwing a ball. Have you ever thrown a ball around? Maybe outside? Okay, well, we're going to pretend that we're throwing one. So for this one, we're gonna throw, and then in the next verse, we're gonna catch. So let's practice throwing. Throw and throw. All right, let's throw everybody and say hello. Throw everybody and say hello. Throw everybody and say hello, no matter what the weather. Very good. All right, now did you remember what we're going to do next? We are going to catch. So we're going to pretend we're catching our ball, just like a baseball player. Are we ready? Okay. Let's catch everybody and say hello. Catch everybody and say hello. Catch everybody and say hello, no matter what the weather. Very good, everyone. Today, our story time is all about mail. Do you have a mailbox at your house? Maybe it's in front of your house or maybe it's attached to your house, or maybe it's with a group of other mailboxes so that your mail carrier can easily put all of the mail that you get in there. Yeah, have you ever gone to the mailbox and opened it up and found some really cool surprises inside? That's really fun, isn't it? All right, well today we are going to make our own postcard to put in the mail for maybe a friend or a family member and Hopefully, when they open up their mailbox, they'll be surprised to find something from you. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? All right. Well, we are going to learn a little bit more about the mail in our first book. We're going to learn what snails who deliver the mail have to go through in order to send a letter like this all the way to your house. Snail Mail by Samantha Berger. Pictures by Julia Patton. And it's read for you, with permission, from RP Kids Philadelphia. Thank you. A long, long time ago, but really not that long, before email and texting, clicking and sending, mail was delivered in a much different way, a much slower way. It was called snail mail. Many suspected it was called snail mail because snails delivered it. Dale Snail, Gale Snail, Colonel McHale Snail, and Umberto. Although it took much longer, 
everyone agreed that some things were just a little more special when they were delivered by snail mail. Things like birthday cards, notes to Santa, postcards, and love letters. One such letter was made by a girl who loved a boy. It was a card made with her own hands, written in her own handwriting, and sealed with her own kiss. It even smelled a little bit like her. It had to be delivered by snail mail. The letter had a long, long way to go. It would start on one side of the country where the girl lived and it would travel across to the other side where the boy lived. It was a very big journey, especially for a snail. They knew it would be a challenge. They knew there were many risks, but when they saw the girl's face as she mailed her letter, they knew they had to try. Dale Snail looked determined. Gale Snail looked ready. Umberto looked like he had been working out. Snails, take your places, said Colonel McHale Snail. The four snails each slithered underneath a corner of the envelope and carefully lifted it up, barely. On your marks, get set, go, commanded Colonel McHale Snail. It was a slow-mo go, slowly, 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 they inched forward. Remember the snail mail promise, said the Colonel. Neither rain, nor snow, nor heat, nor hail will stop a snail from bringing the mail. They started their journey by crossing the desert. There was bright golden light in the day and a sea of silver stars at night. There were spiky prickly plants and giant building block rocks. The envelope kept them shaded from the hot sun and protected them from all kinds of curious creatures. Do you see any animals on this page? Steadily, they made their way through red rock canyons with dripping sand castles and rippling dunes. And though they were very tired and very thirsty, the whole time they chanted their snail mail motto. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor hail will stop a snail from bringing the mail. Next, they trekked over vast mountains and through thick pine groves, past shimmering cool lakes and sweet green meadows. And every day they saw a rainbow, sometimes even a double rainbow. The sunsets here were so breathtaking, even Colonel McHale had tears in his eyes, but he insisted it was only allergies. And even though their progress was very slow, there was something special about slowing down to look around and notice what an amazing place the country was. They wound their way through cornfields and crossed flat flatlands. They used the envelope to surf on the wind and to catch rides with the sparrows. Sometimes it poured, sometimes it blizzarded, sometimes it got blazing hot, sometimes it pelted ice. Sometimes it did all those things in one day, but the snails were determined to deliver the mail. Hmm, that must have been when they were in Michigan. And finally, in a giant city, down a long narrow street filled with numbers and letters and sounds and smells and honking and beeping, the snail mail found the boy.
The boy opened the envelope and saw the girl's letter. He saw it was made with her own hands, written in her own handwriting, and sealed with her own kiss. It even smelled a little bit like her. When the snails saw the boy's face as he opened the letter, they knew their journey was worth it. Yay, snail! And there was also a letter waiting for them. It was from the United States Snail Mail Office. It was written in fancy letters and sealed with a shiny seal. It even smelled official. Inside, they found a letter congratulating them and four golden medals for good service. It was something they could have only gotten through snail mail. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor hail could stop those snails from bringing the mail. So they headed home to tell their tale. Only not slowly at all, because snail mail finally got an airplane. The end. Mail carriers have to deal with all kinds of different weather when they deliver the mail. And so we're going to sing a little bit of a song about that. This is to the tune, Skip to My Lou, and we are going to start in the spring. All right, now at home, I want you to follow along with me and do all of the motions with me. And that way, even if you don't know the song, you can still participate. All right, cool. Okay. So we're going to start in the spring with rain. Rain is falling, what should I do? Rain is falling, what should I do? Rain is falling, what should I do? What should I do, my darling? Hmm. What do you do when it's raining outside? I'm going to get my umbrella, that's what I'll do. Get my umbrella, that's what I'll do. Get my umbrella, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do, my darling. All right, next up, we have summer, and summer is known for sun. So we are going to make a sun with our hands. Sun is shining, what should I do? Sun is shining, what should I do? Sun is shining, what should I do? What should I do, my darling? Hmm, what do you do in the summer? I think I'm going to put on some sunscreen. I'll put on sunscreen, that's what I'll do. I'll put on sunscreen, that's what I'll do. I'll put on sunscreen, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do, my darling. Okay, next we have fall, and in the fall it gets really windy, so move your hands back and forth like this, and we'll pretend that they're wind. <laughs> wind is blowing, what should I do? Wind is blowing, what should I do? Wind is blowing, what should I do? What should I do, my darling? All right, now what would you do if it's windy outside? Hmm, I'm going to pretend that I'm wearing a wind coat and I'm going to put my hood up over my head because I don't like when my hair is blowing all around when it's windy. So I'm going to do that. All right, are we ready? I'll put my hood up, that's what I'll do. I'll put my hood up, that's what I'll do. I'll put my hood up, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do, my darling. All right, and what's the last season? We have winter. And what happens in the winter? It snows. So we are going to move our fingers like this for snow. Snow is falling, what should I do? Snow is falling, what should I do? Snow is falling, what should I do? What should I do, my darling? All right, what do you do when it's snowing outside? Do you get on snow boots and get a warm coat and maybe some mittens? Ooh, let's put on mittens. I'll put on mittens, that's what I'll do. 
put on mittens, that's what I'll do. I'll put on mittens, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do, my darling. Very good. You are all ready to deliver the mail in any sort of weather. It came in the mail by Ben Clanton. Read for you, with permission, from Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Liam loved to get mail. Hooray! Too bad he never got any. Boogers. <laughs> he checked daily, no, hourly, no, every few seconds, but found diddly squat. But then, on a day much like any other, an idea struck Liam. Boink, ouch! If he sent some mail, then maybe he'd get some in return. Gotta go write a letter. See ya, Jamal. Uh, okay. Not sure who to send something to, Liam sent a letter to his mailbox. Dear mailbox, I would like to get something in the mail. Something big. Please love Liam. As soon as Liam put the letter in, the mailbox began to shake. It made all sorts of strange sounds. Crink, toot, whoa, wink, squibble, wobble, whoop. When Liam looked inside, he was met by a blast of fire. A dragon had come in the mail for Liam. And it was for Liam. See, it says right there. Liam loved the dragon, but he couldn't wait to see what he might get next. Dear Mailbox, thank you for the fire-breathing dragon. It is just what I always wanted. Can you send me more stuff, please? Love, Liam. P.S. You are the best mailbox ever. Soon, the mailbox was spitting out all sorts of things. Pickles, pigs, a whale with wings, a trombone, a triceratops bone, even a funny bone. Knock, knock. Liam liked it all. He liked it all so much that he wanted even more. Dear mailbox, you send the best mail. I would love it if you sent me a hundred, no, a gazillion more things. Love, Liam. Oodles and oodles of mail flooded out of the mailbox. What kind of stuff is Liam getting? Look at all this. Too much mail. I love this. Got any good jokes? I'm bone dry, says the funny bone. What was Liam to do with it all? Whoa, awesome! Then another idea struck Liam. He probably wasn't the only kid who had ever wanted to get mail. Where are you going now? Gotta write a letter! Again? Dear Mailbox, thank you for all the mail, but I think it's maybe too much for just me. Can you help me send some of it to other kids? Love, Liam. With some help from the mailbox, I bet Amelia would love this thing. Liam was soon mailing things to kids all over the place. Liam found he rather liked sending stuff. He liked it so much that before long, almost everything was gone. That was okay with Liam. He could always ask the mailbox for more. But maybe 
some other time. The end. For this next section, we're going to learn all about syllables. Syllables are the smaller sounds that make up bigger words. We're gonna practice learning about syllables using some of our names. So for example, my name is Carolyn. There are different sounds that make up the name Carolyn. And if you listen very closely, it's broken up into different parts. Now what I like doing to make sure that I learn about these different parts is I like clapping. It makes it a little bit clearer to distinguish the different parts of a word. So for example, Carolyn has three syllables. Carolyn. All right, so why don't we try clapping that out? Are we ready? Carolyn. So there are three syllables in the name Carolyn. All right, let's find some other story time friends out there and find out how many syllables are in their name. We have different mailboxes. This one is mailbox number one, number two, and number three. And they have those numbers on there for the amount of syllables they represent. So if you have a name that has one syllable, it's going to go in mailbox number one. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, we'll try a couple and see what happens. Now I have some letters to some of our story time friends but we need to figure out what is the right mailbox for them to go into. So this is our first name. Our first name is Ellie. Hi, Ellie. How many syllables does Ellie have in her name? Let's clap them out. Ellie. Ellie. How many syllables does Ellie have in her name? Two. That's right, Ellie has two syllables in her name. So we're gonna open up mailbox number two. Ooh, let's see if it's open. <laughs> there we go. And we're gonna put Ellie's letter in mailbox number two. All right. What about this next name? This is Adeline. Hi, Adeline. Adeline, how many syllables are in your name? Let's find out. Are we ready to clap? Adeline. How many syllables did you get that time? Let's try it again. Adeline. That's three syllables. So we are going to put Adeline's letter in mailbox number three. For three syllables. Oops. Here we go. We'll open up our mailbox. and put in Adeline's name in number three. Okay, our next story time friend is Nick. How many syllables does Nick have in his name? By the way, hello, Nick. Nick, one syllable in Nick. Ready, let's try it again. Nick, yep, just one. So we are going to put his letter in mailbox number one. All right, I know that was very tricky, but you guys did a great job in finding out all of the syllables for our friends. All right, can you try now figuring out how many syllables are in your name? It's already time for our closing song. For those of you that have never done our closing song with us before, we will practice all of the motions. And for those of you that know all the motions already, this is just a nice refresher. Okay, so this song is called See You Later, Alligator. So we start with waving goodbye, see you later, alligator. And then in a wild crocodile, we make these chomp hands and we chomp. I like making mine with teeth, with little claws, and they chomp. The next line is give a hug, ladybug, so you hug yourself. And blow a kiss, Mwah! jellyfish, just like that, blow a kiss. I like doing it with two hands because it's more fun. See you soon, big baboon is our next one. So we pretend we're monkeys. Out the door, dinosaur. 
we point to the door. Take care, polar bear. This is the sign for bear in sign language. And then wave goodbye, butterfly. So we wave like this. Okay, are we ready? Let's sing our song. See you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. Yay! Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. Now you have a special story time craft kit. And in this kit are all of the supplies you need for all of the programs and their crafts for all of March. Okay, so find the little bag. There are three little bags in the big one. Find the one that says mail and inside you're going to find a postcard just like this. All right, so for our activity today, I want you to color a really cool picture on this side of the postcard and then have a grown up maybe dictate a message to someone. Can you think of someone who you would like to send a postcard to? It might be grandma or grandpa, or it might be mom or dad, or it might be a friend or a cousin or someone just really cool who you think is really cool. All right, so draw your picture on this side, then get a grown up to help you write a message to that very special person. So say if you're writing to grandma, you can put dear grandma and write a message and then love and see if you can sign your name. See if you can do that all by yourself. Okay, then on this side, your grown up is going to write the address. So that's where the person you're sending your card lives. So they're gonna write an address on this side and it already has a stamp right up here. Do you see these cute little otters? That's a stamp. So that makes sure that the male people know that this is ready to go out and be sent to your special person. All right, thank you again for joining me for story time. I'm Miss Carolyn and I will see you next week for a story time all about caterpillars. Bye.